All right, some good news for those of us who have a Model 3 reservations. Uh, it looks like EPA did their report and their estimations, and they're saying that the, the range for the Model 3 is actually going to be longer than the Tesla was estimating. The Tesla said that the longest range that the higher end of Model 3 will go for will be 310 miles, but the EPA says it will go for 334 miles. Now, that's a little bit surprising, right? Because you obviously want to announce that your range is much longer than it really is. It's not certainly not stopping those companies announcing all kinds of new uh, electric cars uh, last week and the last couple of, couple of weeks actually in the Frankfurt show. Um, so why Tesla is being a little bit modest here? I mean, Elon Musk has always been pretty open about how great the brand is and we'll all love it, right? Well, it looks like they're trying to uh, uh, widen the gap between the Model 3 and the Model S and the Model X uh, because they're trying to fight this war where people are thinking that Model 3 is like a, a third version, a version 3 for, for Tesla in general and it's going to be much better. Um, and they're trying to kind of fight that rumor. Uh, and therefore, they've been creating that gap more and more and more. Um, and, and they've been trying to say that it's 310 miles instead of 334. Now, to remind you that Model S, the longest range for the Model S, is 341 miles as estimated by EPA, which they also, Tesla, uh, underreported a little because they're estimating at 335, which is kind of close. Uh, now, as you can see, 341 versus 334 and uh, Model S versus Model 3, that's pretty close. I think they're kind of trying to create that gap and, and, and make sure that those of us who are spending our money for the Model S and the Model X feel a little bit better knowing that our car can go uh, uh, somewhat further. But it looks like it may just not be 100% true, though I'm sure they'll be impro improving the battery on, on Model S and Model X you know, in the next year or two. Now, I'm really not that worried because I really, I really don't know what this whole big deal is about. You know, take Mercedes-Benz, for example, right? There are almost all features that you see in their uh, C-Class, you can find the same features in an S-Class and the other way around. Yeah, there are some little perks here and there, but you know, S-Class costs three, four times sometimes more than the C-Class. And I, I think people are paying for it just fine. And uh, you're paying not only for more features, you're paying for the bigger size and just the bigger status. And I think I, I think Tesla will will do just fine, and you know, really, there is no panic. I don't I don't see any panic in the community of people who who are looking to buy the Model Three, thinking um, that it's uh, a third version of of uh, of the uh, of the brand. But also, I don't see people freaking out who want to buy Model S. For example, me, I'm going to renew my lease next year, and I will still go for the Model. Yes, and, and I think it's just a much, much better car. So I'm not really worried. Um, but apparently Tesla is, and uh, you know, this also raises the price, right? Because the uh, 69 and a half thousand price tag is now going to be 74 and a half price tag. So that price goes up a little bit. Uh, well, actually $5,000. But also don't forget, starting next year, because of all this Model 3 being sold, the uh, $7,500 federal tax credit is going to be going away. So automatically raising the price once again for, for all the cars, but all, obviously for the Model S and Model X. So, and, and you know, there will be competition in the next couple of years. It looks like there's going to be competition and those cars are being priced pretty competitively. So hopefully as, as, as Tesla is trying to widen that gap between Model 3 and Model, Model S, they, they don't kind of widen the gap between the pricing of their competitors. You know, you know Lucid Air is gonna be priced at 60,000, at least that's what they're saying, if they were to start a production. Uh, same thing with Porsche, you know, they, they're pricing it, I believe, at 85,000, uh, uh, their starting price from their Motion E, I believe it's called. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I think they might be rushing into this, uh, but I also don't really like all these changes. Every half a year there's a change of in the battery size and the dual or, or single motor and, um, it, it, I, th I think if anything, it's confusing, right? I mean, we started with 40 kilowatt hour and 85 was the top and now it's 100 as a top, but there was 90 in between uh, and with the dual and single motors. I, I feel like, I, I, I mean, I hear this all the time. People are a little bit confused and a little bit scared to buy a car that may be sort of uh, absolute, not obsolete, but uh, old in another two months when they come up with a newer version or, or, or throw a few extra kilowatt hours. Uh, into into the into the mix, um, and I and I kind of understand. So I wish Tesla would just settle down just a little bit, give 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 us three or four choices, and kind of stuck with it for a while, at least you know 
for a year or two. I, I don't think we're asking for that much. Now, I know Tesla told us all that, hey, listen, guys, we're going to be changing stuff every 12 to 18 months, I believe they said. And I'm perfectly fine with it because, you know, technology is moving pretty quick right now. Um, but this is not really technology. I feel like these packages have could have been there for a while and, and, and settled in our minds and the minds of people who are you know, thinking about buying one for the first time. Um, so I, I'm not really sure if they're playing that gap game uh, uh, a little early, but I, hopefully it works out. Uh, um, I just, like I said, we'll, we'll see what the reaction is going to be once Model 3s are kind of being sold in large amounts and we'll, we'll, we'll see if the gap is really reasonable or not. Um, now let's move on to the semi-truck unveiling event. And, you know, the event is next month in about a month. And there are a lot of rumors now, and I see everyone's making a video about how everyone's thinking maybe there will be a pickup truck. Now, it's a rumor, uh, but, but there's something to it, because first of all, Elon just replied to somebody on Twitter, because he just randomly does that once in a while, uh, that uh, there might be coming up with a mini version of a Tesla semi-truck. He kind of asked uh, the, uh, the person who tweeted at him, like, what if we did this? Um, so people started thinking, well, maybe they are doing this, some sort of a secret project. But then people look back in June and when, when I believe it was during a conference call, he was talking about, you know, how everybody should definitely go to the unveiling event because they're going to show a little more, uh, as he put it. Uh, so that people putting two and two together and wondering if there will be a, a truck unveiled now i i would love that now i'm not going to buy a truck i'm not a truck kind of guy but i've been always weirded out by the fact that tesla with a model 3 you know production hell right now and also trying to come up with a model y that they believe is going to be their best seller ever why they're going into this weird direction of industrial very narrow market i know they're going to kick ass i mean it looks like this is really going to be a breakthrough in trucking in the in industry and technology for 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 trucks but eyes on the prize, let's, let's concentrate on the Model 3 and Model Y and, and hopefully a truck because, you know, outside of California, people like trucks and, you know, that, that should appeal to the uh, bigger uh, uh, audience in America and that's not really that bad of an idea. So I really hope that that's a secret project. Now, I would be surprised that they were able to keep this big of a secret still a secret i mean people leak all the time and, and especially with tesla um there's just so many employees with cell phones and stuff leaks out of the, all the time so i would be surprised but if uh, it's really gonna happen then i i'd be i'd be very happy it would be a humongous step for the brand um also speaking of elon tweeting uh he, there was an unhappy customer i don't even call him a customer i, I think he was a troll actually bobby is it Apparently, this guy went to the shopping center here in Palo Alto, in a Stanford shopping center. He was a little upset how he was being treated. He felt that the sales guy was was pushy, which, you know, generally speaking, I think people... I, I don't even want to speak to it because he just didn't offer much of information. What happened? What's What his expectations were? Maybe he appeared like somebody who's eager to buy. And so there wasn't much information, but somehow Elon decided to reply to him. Um, now, the reply was great. Everybody praised it, and I agree. Uh, he basically said, listen, this is not this is not how we want to treat our potential customers. We want everyone's experience to be good when they come to our showroom. So he kind of said that he's going to remind all of his showrooms around the world that that's, that's the expectation he has uh, from how they should treat the customers. But I really thought that replying to a troll is just never good. You know, it just encourages more of them to come out. And also, I feel like if you're going to reply to a concern, there are so many people tweeting at Elon and with really good questions and really, really good ideas. I would rather have him reply to one of those people rather than the guy who just basically is throwing a hissy fit with m not much information and just, just rewarding that I think is just maybe not, not the best use of Elon's time as far as I'm concerned as a fan, right? Um, so, well, it is what it is. I, again, it's a little Trumpy in general that how Elon uses Twitter. For my taste, I really think he should just kind of get off of that and maybe communicate with us either on a certain schedule or, or through his press releases like everybody else. I know Twitter is nice and hip and everything, but I kind of, I think Trump kind of screwed it up for me at least. So I would prefer that he just maybe moves on to some other way to communication uh, with us, with the rest of the clients and potential clients. All right, let me move on, let me move on because uh, I know last couple of weeks, 
Uh, there are so many different news about so many different companies and uh, automakers announcing the new electrified fleets and electric cars. It was very exciting. But now that Frankfurt Shore is over, it's kind of settled down and that's fine. Um, I believe the next big show would be the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, where I'll be and I, I hope to report from there for you guys. Um, but for now, it's been kind of quiet except for Xfinity. Xfinity. Infinity, <laughs> Infinity just kind of came out and said, oh, oh, us, us too, we also gonna, we're totally gonna make an electric car as well. Don't forget, Infinity is owned by Nissan. It's like a luxury brand of Nissan. So, you know, with a Nissan Leaf, I am assuming that they do have the technology to spare. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. But they said, they said they're gonna, uh, not much specs. They didn't say much. They just said they're gonna try to get into production in 2019. So welcome. Uh, looks like they're jumping on the bandwagon and I, the more the merrier but just a little bit later than everybody else. Um, also, Mercedes-Benz, now they've already said that they're gonna electrify their fleet, I believe by 2022. I'm excited, they're looking at some, uh, they're calling it uh, EQ brand, where they're gonna do their full electric cars. They they look pretty cool, I, I have to say. Uh, but now they're putting their money where their mouth is, which is usually a good sign, and they're putting $1 billion into building, uh, electrifying, uh, really building the cars in the US, the electric cars from the Mercedes brand, though they're saying in 2019, uh, they're gonna start selling in the Germany and then next year uh, here in the United States. But this factory is going to be for production of electric cars, but most of that money is gonna go for, I guess, a separate factory nearby that will be making batteries for those cars. So this is something serious. I think this is one, once people start putting money into their promises, I'm, I'm starting, it definitely gets my attention. So I'm looking forward to what they, uh, they're going to do because I felt Mercedes have, like a lot of other manufacturers, have been behind this. So it looks in another two or three years, they might be uh, in the game. So let's let's see what happens with them. I'm excited about that. Uh, but uh, that's it for now. That's all the news that I have for this week. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. <laughs>